in this section I'm going to talk about spline and you have different types of spline to draw here I'm not going to talk about all of them but the first two are very important so let's go to sketch environment and again I'm going to select top plane and now I click on the spline command by clicking on the spline command on the left pane you can see that there is nothing the property pane is not going to appear until you click the first point and after that you can see the property page for the spline now you can see there is a line here but by clicking here and moving my crosshair farther from that point and and by you know moving it up or down you can see that the spline is going to be wide or narrow so you can draw a spline like this the second click is going to be here the third one is going to be here for example and you can see that by moving it far away the spline is going to be a little out of control and I'm going to show you how you can of course edit that spline let's click here and the final click I'm going to close this spline now look what happens if I move my crosshair over the first point that's it now the spline is going to change to have the integrity but if I move it away that's only the points that I have created so I want to close the spline so I go to the first point and click on that and that spline is down now you can see that the spline is in edit mode and when I told you that I need to click in you know uh, shorter distances that's because of these controls uh, control handles that I need to work with and these control handles to have two types of two types of editing one of them is this diamond bar that controls the angle of this handle and the other one is this little arrowhead that helps you to n make it narrow or wide so if you want to you know change the shape of your spline you can work with these two types of handlers that are here you can add more you know uh, control points on this spline but I'm not going to talk about those I can you know uh, I can go and you know click on these reset this handle to uh, reset everything to the original position I can click on reset all handles to reset every handle to its original position and of course I can relax this plan this mean that again you you change everything to make sure that the spline does not lose its integrity now if you uh, if you go for very very sharp angles like his whenever you want to use this spline for specific purposes such as you know creating 3d shapes it's going to break so you should make sure that this does not happen right now you can see that this spline is intersecting itself so it's not going to be good to create a 3D shape out of this. So this is one type of spline. So I just click on OK and the spline is done. So if you want to, you know, edit it, once again you can click on that and every control point is going to appear for you. And let's go for the second type of spline, that's a style spline. This one is very interesting. Very interesting and, and and you can, you know, have better control over this type of spline. So you click here, you can see that this is the second click, and the second click controls the shape of this. It acts like the uh, like the you know in the center of a parabola or something like that that we saw in previous section. Now I want to click here for the second control point and here and for example here and I press escape to finish this. Now if I want to edit this one, I just need to use these control points that are very nice. I can move it to the left or right or up or down. And this helps me to control this spline much better than what we had in previous uh, type of drying splines. Next command I want to talk about is a point. A point is a simple point, so you can click on this point and again select one of the planes and because I have panned I just go and select top plane once again and you can click anywhere that you need to have a point this point is very essential when you work with some specific types of features such as creating a hole or working with uh, for example planes so whenever you want to have those features 
uh, you you will need to have points. So just click everywhere that you need to have a point, and that's as simple as this. Next command in a sketching that's a uh, an important command, and that's uh, creating a fillet or a chamfer over the sketch that you already have. I don't have a sketch, so let's draw one. I'm going to have a simple rectangle, so I select the corner rectangle. I select top plane for that and I start drawing by just clicking here and here. Now, if I want to have rounded corners, this is not going to be, uh, you know, the command that I will use. For having round corners, I can go and start drawing with the line command, so let me show you how you can do that. I'm going to pan a little back to left. So, whenever you need round corners, you just click here with your line command and go wherever you wish. And then you can see that if I stretch my cursor, that's going to draw a line for me. But what I'm going to do is to go over the line and move back. This time you can see that there is an arc. And an arc is going to be drawn for me. And this arc, of course, is not the correct arc. What I'm going to do is to move back over the line once again and then come out. Now you can see that the arc that I want to have is the right one. Now I click here, and again you can see the line is active. I click here, and again I need a round corner type of an arc. So what I need to do is go over the line once again and come out. Now you can see that this arc is exactly what I want to have. And go to the left once again. I want to go here, and I need an arc, so I need to go over the line. You can see the arc is here and go here and again once again I go over the line and I have an arc and I go and click on this point and close the shape. Now this is good everything is okay uh, but there is a problem here that you need to solve it using extra commands. For example you can see that at some points the arc is tangent to, to what you have drawn already but some points no it is not tangent so you need to have tangents for that. I need to select these two parts and add tangency and again these two parts and add tangency and again I'm going to select these two parts and add tangency. Now tangency is there but what you can see here is this I don't have the right radius for each of these arcs I need to go and start smart dimensions to work with them but whenever I want to have such rounded corners on my original shape that is a rectangle here, what I need to do is to use the fillet command. That's very easy. I just click on that and it asks me the entities to fill it and there is a radius that you can, you know, change it. I'm going to have 0.25 and hit enter and now you can choose the entities in two different ways. You can go to the corner and select one of the corners. You can see the preview here. So let me increase the uh, radius so that you can see it better. I want to make it one inch. So if I go over the corner you can see the preview here and I click on that. And the second way to do this is to select one line and two lines. Now you can see another preview here. But I prefer going over the corner. That's easier to select. And sometimes of course not but at most of the times that's easier to select the corner so I just go over the corner and I click on that and I have a fillet here and here I want to have another one so I click on that and there is another fillet so what I need to do is to click on OK so that every fillet is here all of them are tangent all of them have the same uh, radius and you can see a uh, dimension here that says the fillet is about one inch now because everything is done, I click on OK once again and I get out of this fillet, um, fillet command. So there is another command that is chamfer. So let me show you the chamfer. Uh, again, I want to do this on a rectangle. And of course you can have different shapes, but rectangle is just as easy as you saw that. Uh, if I go over the fillet, I can click on this little triangle and can select sketch chamfer. Now you have different types of drawing chamfer. You can select distance, distance. So whatever distance you type here, for example, 0.5, uh, 
that's going to be applied to the lines that you select. If I go over this corner, this doesn't work like that. I just need to click on this and I click on this. And now you can see that there's a chamfer applied to this and, and that's it. Now what I'm going to do is to remove this check from the equal distance checkbox. Now you can see two different distances. The first one is for the first line that you click on that. The second is for the second line that you click on that. So if I want to have different uh, chamfers, for the first one, for example, half an inch, and for the second one, I want to have 0.75, I, what I'm going to do is to click on the first one, and this is very important to select the right one for the first one because the first one has different size from the second one. What I'm going to do is to click on this first one, and then go to the second one, and now you can see that uh, from the first one, we have half an inch, and from the second one we have 0.75 inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to show you the third way to create a chamfer. To, say, to create a chamfer, you need to click on angle distance. And the first one is the distance, the second one is the angle. So if I want to, if I click on the first line, the distance is going to apply here. And of course, the angle is going to apply to the second line. For example, I want to have 60 degrees for the angle and 0.75 for the distance. So if I click on this line, the distance is going to be applied to this. And if I click on the second line, now you can see that the angle is going to apply to the second line. So let's do this the other way. I'm going to have about half an inch here for the first line and 30 degree for the for the for the angle. So that's it. For the first line I click on this one and for the angle I click on this one. Now you can see that from the first one I remove about half an inches and from the second one the angle is going to decide the distance that is going to be removed. So that's it. How you draw chamfer and fillet.